Soyuz 6 was the first spacecraft in which a construction process was demonstrated in space. The process was welding. To be specific, it was electron beam and arc welding. Ever since that 1969 welding test, many other experiments have been conducted relating to methods for constructing and manufacturing items in space. In these experiments, we're uncovering processes in material science that has been hidden by gravity and our atmosphere. Fast forward to 1983. The ESA Space Lab is launched aboard NASA's Space Shuttle. One of the devices on board was the German-built TEMPUS, which stands for Tegelfeuer's Elektromagnetische Prozessien unter Schwerlosigkeit. In English, it roughly translates to Electromagnetic Containerless Processing Facility. This facility was used to study the process of metal solidifying in the absence of a gravitational force and without being in contact with another type of atom. Hence, containerless, or as the German says, Tegelfeuer. The process of solidification is important when it comes to producing metal and alloys with certain properties. When alloys are produced, a small amount of impurity is added to the base metal when it's in the molten state. These impurities is what gives the alloy its design properties. However, because the various impurities all have different densities, if they don't properly dissolve in the base metal, they will tend to flow to the top or sink to the bottom. The result is that the solidified alloy will have a non-uniform composition and consequently the design properties won't be uniform throughout the alloy either. Special cast and process are used to compensate for these issues. However, in a weightless environment, impurities that are not properly dissolved will remain where they are, making the composition of the alloy more uniform and requiring less need for a special cast or additional processing. It's also easier to computationally model the solidification process if gravity is not assumed. So, if we remove gravity from the equation, we can produce better metal alloys. In space, we can take advantage of the lack of air and near-perfect vacuum to create some exotic materials. Take a look at this image. No, it's not a UFO flying above the Earth. It's the Wake Shield Facility, an experimental science platform flown into orbit for the first time by the Space Shuttle in 1994. The main research conducted on the Wake Shield Facility was the growing of thin film crystals used in the manufacturing of solid-state electronics. Thin film crystals can also be used in the production of thin optical lenses and solid state lasers. So why are these thin films such a big deal? Well, they're a big deal because it allows for three very important effects. Purity. The ability to deposit a really thin layer of a material onto a substrate requires good control of the purity of the material being deposited. Higher purity means more predictable behavior, which means a device can run closer to its ideal performance. Smaller structures. Because you have precise control of how thin the deposited material can be, you also have control in theory how wide it can be. This then leads to the creation of micro and nanostructures, from more transistors on a chip to nanomachines. Less mass. Being able to deposit materials precisely where you need them and with high purity leads to wasting less material in the fabrication process. Less material leads to lighter devices, and when it comes to anything dealing with space, mass is everything. So, the process that's used to create these thin films is called epitaxy. The growth of a thin crystalline film onto a crystalline substrate. One type of epitaxy is molecular beam epitaxy. In this method, the material to be deposited is heated in an effusion evaporator cell. It then diffuses, or actually effuses, out of the cell and then heads towards the target surface. Once the molecule or atom hits that surface, it will either stick to the surface or bounce around a bit, reacting with the surface, then stick to it. Using this method, really thin films can be achieved because the molecules come out of the evaporator in a beam and the rate at which the molecules are emitted from the evaporator cell can be controlled precisely by controlling its temperature. Now, the key for all this to work is that the entire setup needs to be in an ultra-high vacuum chamber. This is important not only to minimize impurities, but also to minimize the molecules from hitting other molecules as they travel from the evaporator to the target surface. The process has to truly be a direct deposit process. Creating ultra-high vacuum on Earth is difficult and expensive, but in space you get that for free. 
and your chamber can be as big as you want it to be since you're not actually creating the vacuum. And this is what the Wake Shield facility will set out to demonstrate, the growing of thin films using the free vacuum of space. Material science in space is now mostly conducted on board the International Space Station. It's bigger, more modern, serviceable, and is staffed 24-7. An interesting device used to conduct this research is the Fluid Science Laboratory, or FSL. It became operational in 2008 on the ISS. Since most solid materials that we create start life as a liquid or partial liquid, it's important to understand the internal forces that are present in the liquid when it's being processed and when it's solidifying. This is why the FSL is such an important tool. Heat and mass transfer, convection within molten metals, and sedimentation of impurities in the liquid are few of the phenomena that are affected by gravity. Eliminating gravity from the environment will allow researchers to study the internal forces at work when these phenomena are occurring. Larger crystals can be grown, making it easier to study their structures, which would then lead the way for better and more efficient manufacturing of materials that use those crystals. Beyond manufacturing, bigger, thinner, though fragile constructions can be more acceptable in space because of the lack of gravity, which would otherwise put a large amount of stress on these fragile constructions. For example, Many of the solar panels on spacecraft need structural support when they're deployed on Earth during testing, otherwise they would bend. In space, we're able to construct solar panels bigger and thinner with no structural consequence. As we gather data from these earlier and ongoing experiments, our ability to manufacture materials with specific properties will increase, allowing us to create long-lasting structures and habitats for many, many kinds of missions in space. And this, I think, will be the turning point in human migration into space. Reducing the cost of getting into space by using reusable rockets is good, but only gets you so far when it comes to colonizing space. The bulk of the reduction in cost will have to be done by inventing manufacturing processes that will create the specialized materials we'll need to sustain our presence in space. From walls, to windows, to spacesuits. It's one thing to support 10 to 20 people in space, it's a whole nother process to support an entire civilization. Literally, it's a whole nother manufacturing process indeed. I'm DexDFX for the Celestial Sphere.